So there's a bit of a recap from year 12 stuff with regression, correlation, and hypothesis tests. Most of the year, tw uh, the year 12 uh, recapping is going to be on regression, maybe a little bit about correlation. Obviously, the hypothesis test is the new bit that we've got here. So we're going to start off by thinking about exponential models, which is a re recap of pure year one, which is kind of ideal after that question that came up about the squirrels. So we're going to do a reminder of what this exponential relationships would be between two variables. And then today we'll look at measuring correlation. You'll have talked about correlation went right back in GCSE when we thought about graphs like that. And then probably next lesson we'll do hypothesis testing. And because this is quite a short section on Thursday, we'll have some time to be able to do some revision for any stuff as well, because I know that you'll probably have paper two coming up. Um, after that as well. And then that is us finished with what stats looks like, okay? So what actually is regression? We talk about regression, or you've heard the word regression before. We don't necessarily know what regression actually means. So I've got a graph here, and along the bottom I've got the amount of time spent revising, and then the mark along the side is the exam mark. Um, and each cross that I've got there is used to represent one particular person. So I record people's exam marks as well as the time they spent revising. I want to predict how well someone will do based on the time they spent revising. How would I do this? Well, what I do is I create something that is called a regression line. And this regression line is this line that I've got in here. What did we call a regression line when we were probably in year 10 or year 11? A line of best fit. It is basically the line of best fit, but it is like the posh line of best fit. Because you remember you do a line of best fit and like you would probably, if you looked at your neighbor, they probably did a line of best fit that was similar, but probably like a bit different. This is every mathematician saying, this is the line of best fit. This is the best of the line of best fits. It's the best one that fits them. And you can see here that our exam mark looks like 20 plus three times the amount of time spent revising. That looks like the relationship that we've got there. So if someone spent no time revising, the model predicts that they would get 20 marks, okay? And let's say that the time spent revising was in hours. If someone spent like five hours revising, you would expect 20 plus three times five, which is 35. You'd expect them to get 35. So what we've done here is we've come up with a model to explain the data. And in this case, it was a line which we thought would be A plus BX. Why we switch it around and say A plus BX rather than Y equals MX plus C? I don't know, it's just we do. We have then tried to set A and B such that the resulting Y value matches the actual exam marks as closely as possible. The regression bit is the act of setting the parameters of our model here, the gradient and the Y intercept of the line of best fit to best explain the data. So what we're trying to do is we have played around with this number here and we've played around with this number here so that on average the line is as close as possible to each of the points. In the old version of the A-level, we used to do a proof of why this would happen. We would measure all of these distances to the line, and we would come up with an equation of what all of these distances are, and we would try and minimize these distances for all of them at the same time. That's actually how this regression line is created, by finding all of the distances to some line, and we try and make those distances as small as possible, and that means it's then the line of best fit. But I just wanted to put a note from year one here. This is actually a note from GCSE. I teach GCSE foundation, and there are questions like this in the foundation exam. Extrapolation, making predictions outside the original data range. Extrapolation is unreliable as the trend may not continue outside the given range. Now, you know when they give you like a one mark question and it says, oh, Sally wants to test that if she revised for a million hours, what mark she would get. And it's like, OK, well, our data range is only between, I don't know, one, one hour of revision and 12 hours of revision. So if we try to make a prediction outside of that range, our model probably won't apply. And that is probably because if you were to think about revision and how you do in an exam, you do some revision, and now after a certain point, you can keep revising, and the trend is probably going to level off. Because it doesn't matter how much you revise after a certain point, you're going to reach a particular maximum kind of mark. So you can't make predictions that are reliable outside of the given range, and this is called extrapolation. This is a word you need to know. This is an explanation you need to give. Yes? Yes. Um, actually, no, I thought it was going to be that, and I still think it should be. If anyone wrote app extrapolation in the squirrel question, I would have accepted that. But the squirrel question was talking about um, 
predators or change in habitat or any of the kind of modeling things that might change what has happened. But it is, it is sort of extrapolation, okay? So we previously just said that the line of best fit was probably going to be a straight line. And that was because we were talking about linear regression. However, for certain variables, maybe the population of something, how it varies with time, it might be more appropriate to use an exponential equation. So you could use something like y equals a b to the x, where a and b are constants. We need to find the best match for the data, OK? Um, if y equals a, oh, so let's just actually talk about why we might do this. Um, this equation that I've got here of these different crosses, this is the populations that I might have measured of a colony of rabbits, OK? You might at first think this cross, this cross, this cross, this cross, and this cross. You might actually draw that green line and be like, yeah, that's a pretty good line of best fit. But actually, if you change that line of best fit from, an exp uh, from a linear to an, exp an exponential line, you end up with something that goes a lot more closely to those kinds of points. So certain things will fit certain patterns. And it will be clear from the context of the question that that will look like. But here, this is not something that is a straight line. And we want to be able to try and deal with things with straight lines, because that's what makes data a little bit more simple. And I'm going to try and manipulate this thing that I've got here. And this is basically like what you had in the squirrels question. I'm going to manipulate this using log laws. Now, I've written that the answer is to do with log. This is just any base of log. You can do it with E, any, any of them at all. So I'm going to start off by taking logs of both sides. So I get log y equals log of a, b to the power of x. How can I split up this thing on the right-hand side here, Hamza? You need the log rule where you can plus them. Um, log a plus log b x if the time's together. Good. Can I just ask you why you separated them into two being added instead of pulling the x down? Because you were correct to do it that way. Because the x is only with the b. Good. The x is only applying to b. It is a multiplied by b to the power of x. So you can't pull the x down because it's not applying to both a and b. So we're going to get that log y equals log a plus log b to the power of x. And now I can pull the x down like this. So I end up with log y equals log a plus x log b. Now, if you just pause and think about what we've done here, we have now changed it so that our variables are log y and I have x. But what can you say about log b and log a? What are log b and log a? They're just constants. So if I was to plot a graph, and instead of it saying y and x, if it said x, and on the graph it said log y in that place, it's a bit like saying y equals mx plus c. So I've changed it from being an exponential model. And by changing the y-axis, I've changed it to look like a linear model. But it's not a linear model because it's no longer a y-axis. It is a log y-axis. So you're kind of being these like, I don't know what the word is. You're like manipulating something to take it from being this, this bendy sort of exponential curve and you're going to change the axes so that it flattens out into something that is different, OK? And here it is, the idea of it having been manipulated into these two different things. So we've got this first graph, which is the rabbit population and time. And you can see that you have this curved graph that we have here. And then the second graph is the time, but it's the log of the rabbit population. And the log of the rabbit population, when you do this with time, actually comes up with this straight line. Now, I'm actually going to just show you something. Let me just quickly grab this. Um, it's on my phone. Um, it's obviously to do with some topical kind of stuff. OK, so let me just quickly grab the camera. I'm just going to put it on my phone for a second. So very topical. These are 
as you can see, if I can get this focused. These are the cases of the coronavirus outside China. And you can see that the, um, the scale that we have up the side here goes 0, 5,000, 10,000, 15,000, 20,000. So what could you tell me about this scale along the side? It's going up in 5,000, so we would call it a linear scale, OK? And along the bottom, it's just a constant time scale. What kind of graph does this look like? Exponential. An exponential graph. So the next graph I'm going to show you, I've changed it from being a linear scale, and I've changed it to a log scale. And we should hopefully be seeing what? OK, so here it is as a log scale. Um, so you can see along here, it goes 1, 10, 100, 1,000, 10,000, 100,000. So each time you go up in a log scale, it multiplies by a particular value. And although the trend doesn't seem true for this particular part, across here, if I were to show you this, you would pretty much describe that line as uh, a linear. So that's actually what we've done there. We've taken something that is exponential. We've changed one of the axes. There are some questions where you may change both of the axes. And we've changed it into something that is linear, because linear means much easier to deal with. OK, so there's a very real life example of some of those things that we've been thinking about. Um, let's hop back to this. So I've said comparing the equations, we can see if we log the y values, although we leave the x values, the data forms a straight line with the y intercept as log a and the gradient as log b. Although it's kind of hard to see, that's a bit like the m and that's a bit like the c that we've got there. So I think now if you were to look back at the squirrel question, I think it's actually going to be a little bit easier for you to do that kind of question. OK, so let's actually have a look at an example that we've got here. It says, the table shows some data collected on the temperature in degrees centigrade of a colony of bacteria, and its growth rate is G. OK? So you can see what happens to the growth rate as the temperature increases. It's increasing. It's increasing, yeah. So it makes sense. You know that if something is warmer, the, the growth rate of a bacteria will be higher. But actually, you can also see, roughly, it looks like it's probably going to be a kind of um, an exponential model. It looks like some of the gaps as you go up are getting a bit bigger, I think. It says here that the data are coded using the changes of variable x equals t and y equals log g. The regression line of y on x is found to be y equals minus 0 0.2215 plus 0.079x. And we should note here that this regression line is linear, as we would have expected it to be, because of the coding that has happened. Mika says that the constant minus 0.2215 in the regression line means that the colony is shrinking when the temperature is zero degrees. Explain why Mika is wrong. So if the temperature is zero degrees and the temperature is T, we're saying that the temperature is zero, which means that x is zero. So that tells me that y is minus 0 0.2215, which makes us think, oh, y, that's to do with the growth rate. That must be a negative growth rate. Is that true, though? Why not? What is y referring to? Log g. Log, y is referring to log g. So we have log g is equal to minus 0 0.2215. So how do I find out what g is? Um, Not e. It's going to be g is equal to 10 to the power of minus 0 0.2215. And that is never going to be 0, because you can't, do, you can't never have negative if it's going to be a log. So you've got 10 to the power of minus 0 0.2215. So the growth rate is 0 0.60 to two de decimal places, which is greater than 0. So there is a growing colony at t equals 0. So it looks like it's going to be shrinking, but actually, when you finish manipulating the equation, you should see that it actually gives us a positive value for g. It then says, given that the data can be modelled by an equation in the form g equals kb to the t, where k and b are constants, find the values of k and b. Really, what it's saying here is find out the growth as a function 
of time. Don't worry about the K and the B for a second. Just try and say, at the moment, I've got something that is in terms of Y and X. I have got that Y is a function of X. I actually want to find out G as a function of time. So you're just going to substitute in some different things. So at the moment, I've got this. And I'm just going to rewrite it. So instead of y, I'm going to replace it with log g. So I get log g, annoying that you have a gg next to each other, equals minus 0.2215 plus 0.0792. And x is, x is t. So I'm just going to replace that with a t. So I've done the first bit of writing g and t as a single function. However, Clearly, what they've got here is g is the subject. So because g is the subject, I need to make g the subject of this one that I have. What do I need to do to both sides? I need to bring up. So I need to say this is log of base 10. So g will be 10 to the power of minus 0.2215 plus 0.0792t. Do you notice how you have to do the whole thing on this right-hand side to the power of 10? You don't do that one to the power of 10 plus that one to the power of 10. The whole thing is the power. And so then you have to be careful with this. When you've added two powers together, how can you separate them? So good, it's 10 to the power of this one multiplied by 10 to the power of this one. And so we know the first bit. The first bit is 0 0.6 or 0 0.60. Uh, they would usually tell you what amount to give it to you. And we're going to be multiplying it by, well, how do I change that so it's just something to the power of t? Times by 10 yeah, if you just have a think about this thing for a second, this is the same as 10.00, uh, 0, 10.0, 0, 10 to the power of 0 0.0792, all to the power of t. Do you agree with me there? So that means I can just put that on my calculator and just put that number to the power of t. So that's going to be 10 to the 0 0.0792, which is 1.2 to the power of t. So let's just have a little think about this equation for a second. This is the answer because they wanted it to be g equals kb to the t. So k is equal to 0 0.6 and b is equal to 1.2. Now I just want to explore this a little bit more, a bit like the squirrel question in the exam that we did. You can then think about what's happening with this. When the time is zero, the growth rate is just 0.6, because 1.2 to the power of 0 is just 1. What is happening every hour to the growth rate? Increases. By, mo by what? 1.2. By 1.2. The growth rate increases every hour by 1.2, because if it was in the third hour, it would have been multiplied by 1.2 three times. A bit like compound interest when you're in GCSE. Okay, Compound interest is an exponential curve. The cases of the... COVID-19 that you'll have seen in the news is roughly 1.15 t. Okay, that's what, the, that's what the exponential rate is. It's roughly going up 15% every day. The, um, the growth is going up 15% every day. So these models are used, I mean, like all the, the information that we're seeing in the news at the moment is all built on mathematicians and people who study populations who are trying to make these kinds of projections and stuff. So we shouldn't be scared when we're hearing that every day it is going up, because that's exactly what we would expect every day it would be going up. Yeah, it doesn't make you feel good, but it's not like, oh my God, it's just gone up by a huge amount. It's actually just gone up by 15% bigger than it did the day before, because that's what an exponential model means. A quick side note though, for populations, populations of rabbits are not gonna just go like this forever and ever. Okay, what happens to a population curve eventually? Eventually, eventually it is gonna plateau like this. And that's the same thing that's going to happen with COVID-19, OK? It's going to go like this, it's going to plateau, and then it will, it will come back down as well. So although these models start off looking like an exponential, they don't forever live as an exponential. They actually do a particular curve. If any of you watch the video that I put on Padlet, they actually do a logistic curve, which 
comes back down again and flattens off, okay? So just because we use an exponential model for the beginning parts of things, it doesn't mean we're gonna be overpopulated by rabbits and it doesn't mean that coronavirus is gonna take over the world forever and ever and ever, okay? These are all temporary things. We're not gonna live amongst millions of rabbits because of their population, okay? So we're gonna just do one more quick example here and then you're gonna do some questions from this exercise. Here we are, we've moved away from that bacteria growth and we're coming back to rabbit populations. So Robert wants to model a rabbit population P with respect to time in years. He proposes that the population can be modeled using an exponential model, P equals KB to the T. The data is coded using X equals T and Y equals log P. The, re the regression line of Y on X is found to be Y equals two plus 0.3 X determine the values of k and b. So it's really the same thing that we've just done on the previous page, and it's just the same thing as what you've got in your test. So we have y equals 2 plus 0.3x, and we know that y we can replace with log p, and we know that x we can replace with t. So to find out what p is, we raise everything to the power of 10, and then we just carefully think about our log laws and our power laws. We don't just randomly do stuff, we carefully think. Okay, well if they're being multiplied, that's going to be, sorry, if they're being added as the powers, that's going to be a multiplication. So that's 10 squared multiplied by 10 to the 0.3t. So 10 squared is 100. 10 to the 0.3, I believe you, I just have to see it on my calculator, is 1.995 to the power of t, that's it. So the value of k is the one that comes before, which is 100, and the value of b is 1.995. So we're just a little bit of interpretation here. How big is this rabbit population at the beginning? 100. The rabbit population at the beginning is 100, because when t equals 0, this thing equals 1. So the rabbit population to begin with is 100. Roughly, what is happening every year? By one, roughly every year, the population is doubling. Okay, so you would expect the population to be 200, 400, 800, 1600, and I'm just going to give up after that. Okay, you probably, after you do a couple of questions from exercise 1A, you can probably go to the test paper you just did, and you can probably do the squirrel question. OK, the squirrel question, they give you a straight line at the beginning where you have to extract the information. What is the gradient and what is the y intercept? You come up with this. You come up with that question to begin with. And then you just do the rest of what we've just done here. Take what out? Why? You did, pure, you did this in exponentials in year one. It's year one content. We do it long. This is year one content. This is year one content revisited, not year one content taught for the first time, so I should remove it from the exam, okay? So I'll pick a couple of questions for you to do from exercise 1A, and then we're good to go.